I'm Akiko Fujita here on the ground in Las Vegas at CES 2024, where there's certainly been a lot of conversation about autonomous driving. We are joined by Professor Amnon Chashua. He is the president and CEO of Mobileye, yeah. right in the center of that conversation. It's great to have you here today. Great to be here. Uh, you've had a string of announcements here on the ground, one of those being the driving experience platform, yeah. the DXP. You've kind of described it as a, a type of operating system That's right. for a car like Polestar. How does it work? So, you know, Mobileye is a supplier. We're talking about very complex uh, systems that involve uh, multiple cameras, about 11 cameras, imaging radars, LADARs, you know, very heavy uh, compute. So it, it's a big chunk of the car. And uh, the car maker naturally wants to control important aspect of the driving uh, experience, not treat it as a black box. On the other hand, for Mobileye, customizing a system per customer would, uh, in, would you know, be difficult for scaling. So we found a way in which we can build a system, basically build only the infrastructure of the system, which is one that fits all, and allow the car maker to write code on top of our system to control the driving experience. So I'll, I'll give you an example. We, we, we divided the world into what is universal and what is unique. So for example, controlling the car is unique. HMI is unique to the, to the car maker. Perception, on the other hand, is universal. There is no reason that a BMW or an Audi or a Hyundai will have different perception engines because the role of perception is to understand the environment and you need to understand the environment to a certain accuracy that will enable autonomous driving. So there's no differentiation there. But then comes the driving policy. Driving policy is all the code that is related for decision making of the car when to change lane, how to change lane, how to negotiate with, the, with other road users, the braking profile that you use, all of this controls the driving experience. Driving policy contains a lot, a lot of AI, a lot of uh, validation, a lot of data-driven uh, processes, and customizing this per, per car maker would be a nightmare. So what we found out is that we can take the driving policy and separate it into the universal and unique, the universal part is what we code, this is the operating system, and the unique part is what the car maker codes on top of our universal infrastructure. And in that way, create a system that can scale to all car makers. So allowing the brands to, to customize according to their brand. Uh, there's certainly been a lot of negative headlines that have played out here in the U.S. around autonomous driving. The biggest one being uh, GM's Cruise. They've also mm -hmm. had to halt um, all operations after the incidents yeah. that have happened in San Francisco. Uh, I realize Mobileye is not involved in that, but I, I, yeah. I'm curious what the conversation has been with some of your clients. Has this given them some pause in terms of how they integrate this technology yeah. in their cars? I think this, the story of autonomous driving, there are three stories there. One story is safety. Another story is buying back your time. Say our, you know, traffic today is congested, you sit a, a quite a long time in a car, you'd like to do something else while you're going from point A to point B. In your car, right? Now, use your smartphone, for example or read a book, right? so, so buying back your time. The third story is using the car as a resource. Right? So um, for like an Uber, like a ride hailing. So the story of Cruise and Waymo is only the third story. The story of using the car as a resource. Mobileye is active on all three stories. So for example, safety. For safety, you don't need hands-free. For safety, you want a system that observes 360 degree everything around you understands all this and has a situation awareness of everything that happens around you and then prevents you from making a mistake, prevents you from hitting a pedestrian, prevents you from if another car is getting closer to you, your car will, uh, will offset. If you are getting close to a car with an open door, your car will, uh, will offset. If there is an obstacle, your car will do kind of an evasive uh, maneuver. So this raises the safety levels to a very, very significant degrees. Once you have the safety, you can start allowing the driver to have hands off. So this is the second story of buying back your time. But when, when you talk about, you don't necessarily need to be hands free in order for safety. Is that where you think the real use case is, be, can, is going to be in this technology? I mean, so much of the attention has been about yeah. level five autonomy. That's right. But you know, because they, they focus only on the third story. The first two stories have significant value proposition. 
the safety story is a very significant value proposition because it saves lives. The second story of buying back your time, so if you have an eyes off system in a consumer car, you are driving from San Francisco to Los Angeles and 90% of the time you are on highways and on a highway the system allows you to you know, give control to the car and legally you'll be able to do something else because it's an eyes off system. This is a significant value proposition because time is important. Right? Because you want to do something else while you're driving. The third story is about using the car as a resource. This is the Waymo and Cruise uh, story. And I think that the, the public is aware only of the third story. Hmm. It's not aware of the first two stories that are very significant in terms of their value proposition. So if that third story has gotten a lot of the attention, has been the, the first chapter, let's yeah. say, in autonomous driving, how does a platform like Supervision for Mobileye, how does that get you to the next story? What are we talking about here? So the, the Supervision is the first story and half of the second story. What do you mean? It is a system that has 360 degree situation awareness. It has 11 cameras around the, the car. So it understands everything around you and, and can provide a layer of safety, provides a layer of safety way beyond any driving assist systems uh, that exist uh, today. It also provides you hands-free experience provided that you are alert, that you are supervising the system. How do you it, ensure that? So there's a, a driving monitoring camera watching you, and if your you know, gaze is on the road, the system will allow you to drive hands-free. Uh, otherwise, the system insists that you hold the steering wheel. Right? So it's not, it's not the second story of buying back your time because you are supervising the system, but the driving becomes much more relaxed because the car is driving itself. But really, the biggest story there is safety. The step up, Beyond supervision, which we call chauffeur, is adding a few more sensors for redundancy, like a LADAR imaging radar. And then you define certain road types or certain conditions, say, for example, highway driving, where you can then legally have eyes off. Right? That's the second story, and that's also coming out in about 2026. Those are the announcements that we made with the Western OEM, nine car models are going to be equipped with the chauffeur system by 2026. Polestar is going to be equipped with the with chauffeur system in 2026. Uh, FAW, a number of models in FAW yeah. of China will be equipped with that. So this is really the next the next step coming out. Uh, very quickly here, um, a macro question because you are in touch with the biggest car makers that are out yeah. there. Are you seeing a bit of a pullback in terms of investments that they're making in the technology side of autos just given where things have been? Or are you finding that they are still accelerating some of those investments because where the market is going? Yeah, I, I think it's the opposite. If you look at the gross margin of a car, especially in electric uh, cars, it's very difficult to get a good gross margin. What is really the money maker in a car is the, the intelligent driving. The fact that you can provide safety, you can provide, uh, you know, buy back your time with a chauffeur system, hands-free uh, driving. Those are, are measured in many thousands of dollars and increase the gross margin of the car. So the car makers will compete on the level of intelligent driving that the car has. Because from an engine point of view, the chassis point of view, the differentiation is becoming more and more problematic. It is really the intelligent driving, the, the, the HMI, the driving experience. What are you providing the, the driver beyond the basics of an engine and the chassis? Right? This is where the big money is coming. So I think the opposite is happening. Car makers are investing even more in this area. Yeah, it's been fascinating to have these conversations here on the ground about <laughs> where the car experience is going. Professor Amnon Cheshua, uh, President and CEO of Mobileye, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Today. Thank you very much.